Now then guys, Quinn's Dude here. Thanks for joining again on the Rad Music Chat channel. This next album that we're going to look at just now uh, is pretty much the reason why uh, we've all heard of Jay-Z and Nas. Um, so it's pretty huge. Let's get into it. Welcome back to the Rad Music Chat channel, guys. Thank you so much um, for joining. If you are new here, please hit the subscribe button. That way you'll get notified when I put up new content. Um, and also, if you enjoy this video, down below, the thumbs. For today's choice, guys, we're jumping back into the uh, 1001 albums you must hear before you die book. Today we are looking at uh, the album Ready to Die by Notorious B.I.G. Um, this was released on September the 13th, 1994, and to date, in America alone, has sold over 6 million copies. Genres attached to this one are simply uh, hip-hop and gangster rap. Now, some of you may be wondering what I meant when I mentioned Jay-Z and Nas uh, in the intro. Um, basically, what this album did, Jay-Z had actually had several albums out before he uh, broke commercially. And Nas followed a very similar sort of pattern with uh, the music on Ready to Die. Um, and what I mean by that is with Ready to Die, Notorious B.I.G. and, and, and his producers, um, of course, his good friend um, Puff Daddy was uh, an executive producer on this album. And it came out on his label, um, Bad Boy Records. Um, one of the main producers on this album uh, that actually was was working hands on was Easy Moby, amongst some others. Now, what this album did was manage to um, show that you can still remain um, hardcore and hard hitting and and graphic in these mainly autobiographical um, songs, like uh, like Biggie did, um, but also give it some a kind of sheen and feel that meant that it, it uh, crossed over to the mainstream and i mean if you think about it there was obviously huge hip-hop artists from the gangster rap scene before the likes of obviously ice cube and wa um ice t but none of them had actually gone to the extent uh commercially that um that, that ready to die had what i mean by this is musically it's unfair to call it minimalistic but what it does is it it, it keeps the bass um really weighty there's a heavy bottom end to this but at the same time you're also it's pleasing to the ear with the slick glossy uh production um and you're mainly sort of using uh funk beats um and samples now what this does is it pushes to the fore the star of the show which is uh the notorious big um his storytelling you know he, he's seen as one of the best um storytellers in hip-hop and the, you know the, the 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 idea was always to keep that at the forefront so everything else going under under it was more complimentary rather than ever kind of um taking a front seat the album's very clever as well in the fact that it it it, it basically um follows his life from birth through to uh, coming out of prison, through to sort of making himself um, and then has like a fictional ending to the album where in the end he um, uh, takes his own life. When I'm talking about highlights on an album um, as strong as Ready to Die, you'll uh, hear me use the phrase um, throw a dart. And I mean, a track as early on in the album as Give Me The Loot um, has got over a hundred million plays um, on Spotify alone. Uh, and I mean, that is a really hardcore song, both lyrically and um, musically. And that just goes to show how clever um, Biggie and his production team are. So there was three singles off um, Ready to Die. There was um, Juicy, Big Papa and One More Chance. Uh, Big Papa for me is a really significant one because 
uh, Biggie was such a proudly East Coast rapper, and uh, Big Popper is basically, I mean, listen to it, it's, 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 it's a G-Funk track. And G-Funk was obviously something that was very, very associated with the West Coast hip hop sound, founded by, you know, Dr. Dre. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, it just is testament to the fact of doing what was right for the feel of the song and the lyrics that, uh, yeah, that, uh, you know, Biggie had a, a G-Funk track. I will often um, put across what is a personal highlight for me. And it's hard to look past track nine, um, which is titled The What. Um, I really love the drum sample, drum loop on this track. Uh, it's got a really open ringing snare drum on it. Uh, really cool tempo. Um, and then it's got like a wah laden uh, funky guitar hook as well. But this is a track that features Method Man from Wu-Tang Clan on it. And um, it's uh, them two together. It's just brilliant. And lyrically, it is uh, just hit so hard. And um, obviously, you know, you've got two masters uh, of their art here together and crossing over. So as you may or may not know, um, Biggie was, uh, was shot um in a drive-by in 1997 um 16 days before the release of his second album um this album ready to die is his debut now what's really uh there's a couple of things to take from this is the fact that when this album was released he was 21 years old you know he was still a kid basically and obviously everything he'd been through in his life uh, you know this album is is, is essentially you know, we'll, we'll take you through all that. Um, and just how gifted he is um, and how well the the lyrics are put together and flow. It's just crazy. I mean, you just think at 21, he was, he was writing this way. Um, and the other thing is as well is, I know it's a gangster rap album, so it's going to talk about death a choice lyric from uh, the track everyday struggle sometimes i hear death knocking at my front door i'm living every day like a hustle another drug to juggle another day another struggle i don't want to live no more sometimes i hear death knocking at my front door and it's like i you know it is a gangster rap album there's going to be lots of talk of death etc but there's a you know there's a hell of a lot of it on this album talking about his own death and it was almost as if he knew the way that he came up and the way that he lived life um that it was going to come sooner rather than later the biggest compliment i can pay to this album is just go listen to it from start to finish and pay attention to it and if you've time go again instantly on a second go i find that that second time round from top to bottom really did um hit hit harder um I know that critical acclaim and, and and what critics say about music and art in general isn't isn't the be all and end all whatsoever of course um but rolling stone magazine is usually uh pretty reliable they've given you know they they said this album was the the, the number one in in their countdown of hip-hop records of all time and then ended up putting it in number 22 in their 500 albums of all time regardless of genre um from um 2017 i think that list was compiled perhaps the only negative um and i'm i'm, I'm nitpicking here and i have seen um i have seen other people say this the only negative perhaps is 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 it kind of the the beats and the feel does tend to sort of stay around the same sort of place um but it's it's minor i mean I was looking for, for something negative to say. So that's it, guys. Thank you very much for watching. Um, please let me know what you think, either negative or positive in the comments. And uh, that's it for this one. Stay rad.